Man, oh man, oh man. You know, I was doing some more research and I came across something that was fascinating. Maybe you will find this as fascinating as I did, that the average home price in America is currently $400,000. You know, places like far out, far out, houses would be cheaper, but where people wanna live, that's what the going rate is for a house. Now, here's the kicker. Guess what the income is to afford a $400,000 house? It is six figures. And what many people are finding out, and we're gonna talk about this, is that people who make six figures are finding out that six figures is not enough. It's kind of perplexing. Let's say your name is Ed and your wife's name is Vanessa and you make 50 and she makes 50. Together as a couple, you're at six figures. And there are many couples who are at six figures who are struggling in this inflationary economy. So what we're finding out that six figures isn't enough. Now, I remember the first time that I made six figures, it was enough. It was plenty of money. And this was many, many years ago. What we're finding now in this inflationary economy, that even if you make six figures, even if you manage your money well, even if you make six figures and don't have car notes, it is still really hard to make it if you have children. The childcare costs have gone through the roof. Daycare. I remember I have a friend, and this was five years ago. This wasn't currently, I don't know what it is today, but five years ago, they were paying 2,500 bucks a month for their two kids to go to this daycare. $30,000 a year. He was a nurse anesthetist and his wife was a, so I think together as a couple, they made like 300,000. So daycare represented 10% of their $300,000 a year take, uh, income. Daycare, 10%. That is a, because I think daycare was right on par with what their mortgage. So if you're making six figures and you have children, if you're just making 100K, it could be a struggle. I know that sounds crazy saying that out loud, but the facts, the statistics bear that out. So if people who are making six figures are struggling, what about the people who are not making six figures? All right, so let's get into the little nerdy stuff. 160 million people in the workforce. Okay, 80 million of those people in the workforce make less than $30,000 a year, 80 million. When you move it up to $50,000 a year, 75% of those people don't make $50,000 a year. So we have roughly about 110 million, 100, you know, my math may be a little off, but let's just say 115 million people who don't make $50,000 a year. That is the overwhelming majority of the workforce that even if they were to pair up like two people who are making $30,000 a year, they get together, they're at 60, which is $40,000 short of six figures. And six figures ain't enough. So what I am seeing, and you know, once again, let's take out California and New York. Those places are dramatically expensive to live. We're not even talking about that. Let's say you're in North Carolina. Let's say you were in Charlotte and you're making six figures as a couple and you are struggling in Charlotte, North Carolina. So this was really, cause like I said, I was diving into the mortgage industry. I was diving into this like, how much money do you need to make the average price of a house today? And here's the thing. There are couples who make six figures, who have good credit, who have a down payment, 
and they're struggling to buy a house in this inflationary period. They're struggling. And these are well-qualified people and they're struggling. So if we can go ahead and take the six figure people and they're struggling and everyone below them has got to be catching hell. Cause six figures ain't enough. So less than six figures is definitely not enough. We have moved into new territory, new territory, because let's go back to the old America, the old America that I grew up in. The old America I grew up into had so much opportunity that wasn't predicated on you being technically savvy. Like right now, if you're technically savvy, if you know how to do videos, you know how to do editing, you know how to work social media, there's tons and tons of opportunity for you. But if you are devoid of those skill sets, there's not as much opportunity in America as it used to be. Going back to 1971, 1971 is the year that manufacturing started to leave America in droves. It used to be, you didn't even have to graduate high school and you can go work in a factory, work your way up, make a living wage. This is something that I saw over and over again. Um, I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. And if you don't know the history of Birmingham, Alabama, Birmingham used to be called the Pittsburgh of the South because Pittsburgh was where all the steel mills were and Birmingham, because Birmingham has so many natural resources, there's iron ore literally on top of the ground. And then they have a lot of coal mines. So coal mines, iron ore, and the steel plants in Inslee, this was the pathway from poverty to middle class. You could go work in the coal mine, you could go work in the steel mill, buy a house, get you a Cadillac, your wife could stay home with your children, and you got a pension. That system worked really, really well for a long time. In 1971, we started to move our manufacturing offshore. It got to the point where it was cheaper to buy Japanese steel than it was to produce our own steel here in America. And this is why a lot of the steel mills dramatically reduced their footprints and shut down. And along with this move, a lot of opportunities disappeared. Many, many opportunities disappeared because I am perplexed because, you know, I look at my friends and I look at my friends who are doing well. And my friends who are doing well all make over 300,000 a year. And these are the people who are not sweating anything. They're buying new cars. They're taking vacations. They're buying houses. They make 300,000 to a million a year. They're not feeling any pain. And you have to be in that income range to not be feeling any pain in today's economy. I want you to, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just bewildered as I say this stuff out loud because six figures ain't enough. It ain't enough. And when you get to 300,000, you're talking less than 5% of the economy. 5%. This ain't a 10% thing. I think the top 12% make six figures. This is individual income. I don't know about couples. I don't know how that's put into the stats, but I know that when you get to 300, 400, 500,000, you start moving into single digit percentages, single digits. There's not no 10% of people making 300K. It ain't happening. Because once again, I have to ask myself, and you know, there's some really lively commentary in the comments. I really appreciate that. Keep it up. And someone put this question out. And it was like, without the workers to consume, okay, this will be the end of capitalism, right? I have another argument for you. If there are not enough people to be consumers, and this is going to end um, capitalism, 
Why is cryptocurrency going bananas? Cryptocurrency doesn't produce a yield. It doesn't produce a return. Unless you buy it, it appreciates and then you sell and then you can get some money. But what we're going to move into is a entirely different economy. And let me go ahead and kind of lay out what I feel is going to happen. Elon Musk recently sold $18 billion worth of Tesla stock. And after paying his taxes, he's going to have $8 billion left. More than enough money to do whatever he wants to do. He could buy a fleet of private jets. He, he could do whatever he wants. So we're going to have a small group of people who are going to be the super wealthy. Elon Musk is one of those people, super wealthy. And then below them, we're going to have another group of people who are going to be very wealthy. They won't be super wealthy, but they're going to be very wealthy. And then below them, we're going to have the 10%. The 10% is going to be the top income earners in America that's going to separate everyone else from the super wealthy and the very wealthy. And I feel that we will have new technology, new inventions. And also, I feel that we will see universal basic income at some point in the future. Why? Because it's going to have to happen. Because as automation, you know, and I saw comments like automation, like all these people or, you know, these YouTubers are reading the same art. I'm not reading any articles. I've been talking about automation for the last 10 years because I've been watching automation. Automation is the reason that as I, as a single person business can make seven figures. Automation is that powerful. So I'm not reading any articles. I am living the automation life. I am living it. So, you know, I don't know about these articles because I'm not reading any articles about automation. I am living it because YouTube to a degree is automation. YouTube, these YouTube videos, they play. People are watching my YouTube videos when I am asleep. That's automation, baby. That's automation. <laughs> I don't know what you think automation is, but that's automation. So we're going to see a very crazy society and it just depends upon which income segment are you in because essentially six figures ain't enough so you got to move from making 100k to about 200k and once again the, the stats don't lie as you move up that income ladder like let's take millionaires in the united states of america there's supposedly 21 million millionaires out of a population base of 333 million people. So that's not even 10%, okay? However, when you start to dive into the numbers, the number of millionaires who have like one to $2 million represent about 15 million of those 21 million. And then when you start to get up to 5 million, the number goes down to 3 million. And then when you get to 10 million, it, it, it ain't even a million. It goes into a few hundred thousand. So as you move up the income ladder, the numbers drop dramatically. And typically the average millionaire, which is an asset based millionaire, including their house and their stock portfolio and probably insurance, they don't have any cash. They're still wealthy. They still are a millionaire, but it would be hard for them to raise $50,000 cash unless they sold something. So what we're going to see in the future, and a lot of people are starting to realize this because um, there's a lot of talk about people becoming wealthy in the metaverse. Let me go ahead and tell you something. If you're not already positioned to be wealthy and have proximity of wealthy, you're not going to get wealthy in the metaverse. Um, someone can come here on YouTube and have great charisma, great personality, and literally blow up overnight. That can happen. Metaverse is gonna be something that's gonna be very, very different. Uh, we're going to start to see things that we used to see in science fiction movies. Like, um, God, the movie with Bruce Willis and this chick, and this chick, she was um, the weapon. And you notice how they were living. 
They were living, they were driving these flying cars and they were living in buildings and Bruce Willis was living in maybe 300 square feet. You're gonna see people living in pods. You're gonna see the rise of communals, of communals communities where you're gonna have a whole bunch of people who are just gonna to decide to get together, pool their resources and build their own community. That's gonna be a thing in the future because six figures ain't enough. So people, and this is one of the things that if you go back and if you study history and you understand history, that towns were everyone, everyone knew everyone and everyone was dependent upon everyone. The reason a town worked was because everyone needed each other. And I see that as a return. The poorer you are, the more you're going to need community. Community will be a must. You're going to have to have good relationships. You're going to have to be a good character. People have to know you. They're going to have to like you. They're going to have to trust you for people to help you. That's going to make a comeback to America because we had moved to a point where people had so much money, they didn't really need nobody. That's about to disappear for the lower social economic strata. They're just not going to have the money. They're not going to have the resources. They're not going to have the ability. And once again, if you're in that 10% buffer zone, you're okay. You will be able to buy a house. You'll be able to send your kids to college. You'll be able to do all of that. But if you're below that 10%, and also there will be thirds, because in that bottom, because there's the bottom third, there's the middle third, and there's the top third. And the top third, they're just like, they're almost there. They, they can see it but they're just not there. They can see it. They can look across the fence and see where they want to be, but they're just not there. And some of those people will cross over and they will move into the 10%. The people in that middle third will never. And the people at the bottom third, we're talking about perpetual poverty, generational poverty. They will be, they will have children and their children will be born into poverty. Cause once again, and I've talked about this before and I'm going to talk about it again. There was a study where they took genius level IQ kids, 140 IQ, and the kids who did well came from richer environments where they had the resources. So what we're going to see for many people who ascend the ladder, they're going to be in a resource rich environment. They're going to have everything they need. Essentially, um, to me, YouTube in 2009 was a research rich environment that a lot of people didn't know about. Um, and I feel that YouTube probably has another eight years of growth, skyrocketing growth. And then at that they get point, it's going to slow down. But, and there might be something new that will come along, but we will see. Because many people feel that TikTok is going to displace YouTube. And I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening. I see TikTok and YouTube coexisting. There's YouTube and there's TikTok and there's different content for different folks. But from an economic standpoint, if you want to have the best life that you can, you're going to have to figure out a way to make more money, even if you're making six figures. That's crazy to say. That's crazy to say. But six figures isn't enough when that's what you need to get the average home. And once again, something in the future is going to have to happen. I don't feel that real estate is going to crash no time soon, not in the next two to three years. Real estate is not going to crash anytime soon. I do feel that the price of real estate will stabilize. It will stop skyrocketing, but it's not going to go down. It's just not. We're not going to have the correction that we had in 2009, 10, 11, 12. That ain't happening. So for people, you know, it's going to slow down. And this is going to be. I remember. And for those of you who live up in Boston, um, New York, you already know this playbook. You know this playbook. You had many couples who would live with their parents for years and save up for years to get their first house in Boston, New York, New Hampshire, uh, DC. <clears throat> that was the playbook. You had to do it. 
you and your wife were working full time and you had to save thousands and thousands of dollars just to have a crack at buying your own house and you live with your parents. So we're going to start to see people networking and cooperating like that across the board because they're going to have to. They're going to have to. You're not going to be able to buy a house unless you make a certain amount of money or you have a certain down payment. If you are you and your wife both make 100K, she makes 50, you make 50, and you have a $100,000 down payment, you can play in the housing game. But if you only have a $20,000 down payment, $30,000 down payment, and then you're bidding on this house that's like 400, then someone comes and says, I'll pay you 450 and I'll pay you cash, you're out the game. You, and your, you got good credit, you got a good down payment, you're a stable person who could buy a house, you're out the game. <laughs> You're out the game. And you know, it's frustrating. And it, it, it makes me remember some of the frustration that I had when I was in the storage auction business before I learned the game. Because in the beginning, I didn't know what I was bidding on. And there was opportunities that I was bidding on something then someone would come and blow me out the water. And it was just like, damn, 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 damn. Come on, man. I'm gonna get me a unit. Let me get me a good clean unit. Let me get, you. and that's how a lot of people are or right now trying to buy their first house. They're frustrated. They're very, very frustrated. And this frustration, even though I feel in 2023, we're gonna slide into a recession, housing ain't gonna budge. I mean, not in places where people wanna live. You can probably get a deal on a house where people don't wanna live. <laughs> yeah, that stuff, that stuff would be cheaper. You can get houses for 250 in the middle of nowhere all day long, but do you want to live an hour away from a major city? Some people do. Some people enjoy that. Some people enjoy roughing it. Some people do. But for the average person like me, you know, uh, I have re I refuse to live in the suburbs. I will pay the money to live where I want to live. I've lived in Sandy Springs, which is 15 minutes from downtown Atlanta for years. And there are many people like me who are gonna sit down, they're gonna look their wife in the eye and say, look, honey, we gotta do something. We gotta make some stuff, we gotta make some moves, we gotta make some more money. We gotta create a business, a product, a service, we gotta keep our jobs, we're gonna do that. Because in 2022, these inflationary pressures are not going to abate at all. I feel that gas, gas might get up to five bucks a gallon for premium. I, I see that, I can see that happening. And food prices are going to keep going up. Um, so inflation isn't going to stop in 2022. It's just going to keep going on. And we're going to have a recession and we're going to have our, our inflation and we're going to have mass layoffs and we're going to have a hot mess of an economy. That's what I predict for 2023. Like 2022 is going to be pretty much um, what we saw this year. It's just gonna be a little slower, a little slower down, especially in housing. Housing, I mean, if the average price of a house was $500,000, I feel that the housing market would collapse because, well, I, I gave you the numbers. 75% of America cannot afford a $500,000 house. Because even with a good down payment, your housing payment is $2,000 a month. 2000 we with a substantial down payment it's still 2000 so at some point something's going to have to give and this is where marketplace forces start to come into the economy once again you know this is why i feel that housing is pretty much i feel that's where it's, it is where it's going to go i feel that you know instead of a house appreciating 30 percent in a year it'll appreciate two or three percent that's more sustainable. That's more long-term durable and sustainable, but there will not be a housing crash. It ain't happening. And, you know, I say that as someone who's probably gonna buy a house next year. But once again, let's go ahead and talk about this. Because, you know, one of the things is, if you're looking for a house, you need to start looking early. And in my price range, what I've looked at, I'm seeing deals. Why? Because not that many people can afford to buy those houses. So it's a different market, but going forward, you're going to need, and this is crazy, but this is an alignment 
with and you know if you're new to the channel you know and I'll be talking about this over at the corporate game because once again this is about the broader economy economics and stuff like this more videos like this but I had a vision of creating 50,000 corporate citizens and guess where the income range was it was 250,000 even I subconsciously knew that's where you needed to be to have that life that you want in America because the whole deal was to help people create a company or a collection of companies with a net profit of $250,000. That's, I, I put that out, you can, it's in older videos. So that's where you, I feel that you're gonna need to be in the future to be able to be middle class in America. I know that sounds crazy. 250,000 will make you middle class. You will not be rich. You will be upper middle class at 250. That's just crazy to say out loud, but that's where we're heading because inflation ain't going to stop. You want to know why I know inflation, you know, the rate of inflation will change, but inflation itself is not going to stop. How do I know this? When I was a kid, people could get all three grades of gas for under a dollar. I don't even think there was premium because most cars ran on regular. I don't even know. I don't even remember. I think there was premium and I think only a few cars ran on that, but the average car ran on mid grade or regular. And I remember when gas was like 60 cents a gallon. You know how I know? I used to cut grass and I used to have to fill up my little gas can and I paid like less than a dollar to fill up my gas can. And I think a gallon of gas would cut 10 yards i believe if i remember if i if, my, if i can recollect if i can re recollect i think it would cut 10 yards 60 cents 60 cents in the lawnmower would make me about 100 bucks so yeah going forward you're gonna have to be at 250 250 thousand dollars a year to be considered middle class because six figures by itself ain't enough. This is crazy, but this is where we're heading. And you know, going ahead and speaking to the folks who were like, um, let me just say something, and I don't mean to sound dismissive or insensitive. Rich people don't care about you. You know, there's in a broader sense, like if a child and they do a GoFundMe and the child needs an operation, you may get some rich people who will contribute, you know, because that's a special isolated incident. But as a general notion, you think rich people wake up thinking about poor people? So we're going to have this lower mass of people with nothing to do. And like I said, I feel that we're going to have universal basic income, not because they want to do it, because they're going to have to do it because they're going to have to do it because we will have anarchy. I mean, you got Priscilla over here and her three kids and she's watching this ultra wealthy person drive around in a Lambo. Envy is a short trip away from hate. <laughs> It's a short trip away from hate and to keep the unwashed masses from killing all the rich people, they will introduce universal basic income. I don't know when this is going to happen, but I feel that we'll see it within the next seven to 10 years, because once again, I stand on this automation is not going to stop automation. Because, you know, I just sit back and I look at the things that I can do because of automation and all the things that are available to me. And this is just the beginning. In five years, all of the stuff, that I'm, it's going to be better. It's going to be better. It's going to be easier to use. Like right now, if you didn't know, there is software that writes news articles and there's software that writes books. I don't know how much it costs because I'm going to research that, but yeah, there is software that writes books. And like, let me go ahead and give you the playbook. There will be a software that you will be able to put your writing sample in that software. And that software will start to produce articles and publications in your writing style. 
that's coming. That may already be here, I haven't checked, but yeah, you're gonna have to do like a sample, put that in there, and then it's gonna, it's gonna get your, your vibe, so to speak, and it's gonna create publications and stuff in your writing voice. That's coming. I can't wait. I can't wait because I'm I don't care what it costs. I'm gonna get it. And I'm gonna just start writing my ass off. I'm gonna put my little simple in and it's like essentially you will be able to write a book overnight. You will go ahead, you will put your writing sample in, and in the morning you will have a written book. That's the future. That's automation. That that that's coming. That is coming. And once again, it depends on which income segment. If you're in below that, that 10% buffer zone. And once again, if you're in that top third of the lower economic, you will have some opportunities and you have some chances. But if you're in that 10% or you're in that rich or you're in that ultra rich, all these things will be available to you. Your life, like, I mean, I know what it's like to be poor. I know what it's like to be hungry. I will never ever forget feeling like that. But I also know what it's like to be rich. And I ain't gonna lie, being rich is fun. Being, ri being rich is fun. To know that you can walk in the store and anything you see, if you want it, you can get it. That's fun. To know that you don't have to worry about normal people bills. You don't have to worry about mortgages and car payments and you, that's, that's fun. And I really want to move as many people as I can into that territory with the corporate, because let me go ahead and just talk about this. What I'm going to do in 2021, you know, for, you know, three years, I've been doing a lot of corporate training and then, you know, I've learned from my mistakes. So in 2021, I'm going to introduce a corporate playbook to move more people over here. And uh, this is the reason I started the corporate game because it's a game. Uh, there's some stuff that I'm gonna do that I'm gonna show my students that's literally gonna blow your mind. <laughs> it's just gonna blow your mind playing the corporate game. Um, once again, it is my intention to move as many people over to the corporate life as possible because you know, my health insurance is like 500 bucks a month. I don't pay that, my company pays that. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I'm gonna talk about that you will not see, or you won't even be able to Google because a lot of people are not doing this. So once again, my intention is to create 50,000 corporate citizens, you know, teach you how to start a business, or scale a business and how to hire and all this other stuff. And that starts in 2021. And I'm really excited because, you know, if you're in the corporate toolbox, you're going to get this. I'm not going to charge you anything for it. And if you're in the corporate papers, um, I believe, I don't know, I got to sit down and think about this. But, you know, folks who bought the corporate toolbox because they paid a grip, they're going to get all this. And there's a lot of stuff that I'm going to do, a lot of things I'm talking about, a lot of presentations, a lot of training, because once again, I have a multitude of channels because this is dealing with the broader economy. And I mean, this is kind of mind blowing when you can sit down and say six figures ain't enough. And that is a factual statement that is factual. There are many people out here who are struggling at six figures. That's crazy that you got all these people out here struggling at six figures, struggling and what this is going to do, because in the economy, you have economic principles in the reality. When people don't have money, we have recessions. And this Christmas season, as uh, in the last video, the worst Christmas ever, we're starting to see real economic inflationary pressures move in. And once again, I guarantee you, once they put out the real numbers, not the fake numbers, not the phantom numbers, not the, the books that are cooked, this Christmas is going to be worse than last Christmas. And that's going to be the first time that that's ever happened because every month we have X amount of people who turn 18 and begin participating in the economy. So every month and every year, our population grows. I got a 
do the, the math on that because every year we have X amount of people who die. We have um, so many people born every month. So I got to break down those numbers and do a video for you. But one of the things that I find fascinating, and I want you to hear me and I want you to hear me well. If you educate yourself, you can cross social economic lines. If you just wake up, eat, go to work, watch TV, hang out with your friends, more than likely you're gonna die in the same social economic class that you were born in. I have transcended social economic classes and I'm telling you, it's a lot of damn work. It's a lot of damn work. It is not, you, like, it's Christmas. What am I doing? I'm working, I'm working. This will be my fourth video today. Because what I do, and you know, I'll get into this only in the pure, pure money, the pure money channel, intellectual properties. One of the things I started to do is batch shoot. I'll shoot five or six videos in one day, then set them up. And then next day, next two days, I can just chill, right? Versus doing a video every, every day, which can be a little onerous. So I do a lot of batch shooting. And that's something that you can do because that can like, seriously, if you have one channel and you shoot six videos in one day and then you release them every two days, you've just created two weeks of content in one day. So bat shooting is something that you should consider if you're a YouTuber, you know, just, just a little tip on how to be more efficient, but yeah. You're gonna to have to be at $250,000 to be considered middle class in the future, in the very near future, really near future. And, you know, it is um, interesting how this thing is shaping up because um, like 2022, I feel that this is gonna be, like I said, a remake of 2021, except it's gonna be worse. It's gonna degrade because as the uh, stimulus economy deleverages and we start to move back to the real economy, nothing but economic pain, nothing but a lot of economic pain. I just see this. I can feel it in my bones because once again, I used to be poor. I know what it's like to be poor. I know what it's like to not have any money in the bank. I know what it's like to have no credit because you know, there, there, some of you have credit or decent credit and you're just maxed out. I was in a position in my life where I had no credit. I wasn't maxed out, I didn't have any credit. I didn't have any credit, I didn't have any money. And I just, to, to think that I was living so economically dangerous. You know, that's economically dangerous to be living like that. Um, yeah, but once again, in the 50, in the future, in the very near future, I'm talking about the next three to five years, you're gonna to have to be at $250,000 a year to be considered middle class. Not rich, but middle class. That's kind of crazy as I say that out loud, because like, as I make this video, I'm just sitting here like, I remember my first year that I made six figures and it was at business environments. I actually felt rich. You wanna know why? Cause back then, and that was 20 years ago, six figures went very far. It went really far. 20 years ago, if you made six figures and you were a married man, your wife could stay at home. 20 years ago, if you made six figures, your wife can have two or three kids. You would be able to have a house, a vacation house, fancy cars and everything and still save money for investments 20 years ago. Now you can't do that because it costs so much to live and the cost of living. Well, it's just going to keep going up and up and up and up and up. It's just going to, it's, it's not, it's not going to go down. Like I said, inflation is here to stay. Inflation is never going to disappear. So if you are waiting for the housing market to correct so you can get that house, you're in for a very long wait because it ain't coming down, ain't coming down. So what you need to do is position yourself where you can make more money. And this is kind of a common theme across all of my channels, because if you want to have that middle-class life, 
be able to buy a nice house in a nice neighborhood, send your kids to a nice school and have a retirement, you need to be at $250,000 as soon as you can get there. That's where you need to be. All right, so let me know your thoughts, opinions, whatever you have. You know, like I said, I've been enjoying because y'all have been having some really deep conversations in the comments. I mean, I'm just sitting there like, bam, this is 20 comments and they're insightful and people are thinking. So, you know, I'm really glad that I shifted the focus of this channel because I'm bringing more thinking people who are actually putting down, you know, and I really appreciate the well thought out comments. You know, you don't have to agree with me because some people don't agree with me. But I will say the people who are not agreeing with me are putting some thought into their comments and they're not just like flipping off or leaving some snarky comment. They're like, well, this and this and this and this and this. And I mean, I saw one comment that was like five paragraphs long. I was like, people are really, really put, putting some effort into this. And I really appreciate that. So thank you. Keep it up. So let me know your thoughts and opinions in here. And I'm going to start running a little commercial at the end of all these videos. I just got to create it where you can go ahead and subscribe to all the channels because this is the Mac Daddy Media Network. That's a new wrinkle. It's a new wrinkle. Uh, once again, there's some more changes. There's going to be some more stuff. There's going to be some more channel. There's all kinds of disruption. That's very, very disruptive. So a lot of stuff is coming. So be ready for it in 2022. That's all I got for now. We'll talk to you guys later.